All right, so we're gonna do the 130 guide, the 13x, so sub 140. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm using roots just to get you to that point. It could get you to sub 130 as well, potentially, uh, depending on how well you execute some of these things. I'm gonna show you a bit of two different types of roots, usually for most levels, um, or a couple variations. Some will be a little slower, some will be a little faster. You'll get the picture. Let's uh, let's jump into tutorial. All right, so we got two different roots here. I'll explain a couple of things about each of them as well. Um, we're mostly gonna be talking about the two like main routes that you can go for in this regards to most maps, as well as different ways that you can end up finishing levels. Um, so we'll be talking a bit more if it applies. Talk about backups, like backup routes, or just various routes and various ways to gain speed. Whichever you're comfortable with. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the first route. This is the route that I would go for. There, you'll get about like an 8-4 if you do it. Fine like that. It can get down to like an 8-2, I think. It's really good strafing and timing under jumps in the beginning. Um, so let's let's break that one down. So this one starts with a regular strafe. Um, kind of like we were doing in the old route, except instead of switching directions and going to this wall, we're gonna do a crouch jump when we get to about here. And what we're aiming for is to actually wall ride on this left wall a bit early, so we gain a little bit of height uh, from that wall ride. So we're aiming to hit probably about in the middle-ish area, or maybe middle left, like that square. Um, and so we wanna get height so we can do a wall jump while turning our view this way, to then Get a nice left strafe and gain speed to reach that platform. So again, it's crouch jump, wall right here, holding left, and you know, forwards left to gain speed. You can do a little bit of strafing motion of it as well if you need to, just slightly. Um, so that's how we get to there. And with that speed, it can carry us over to the red ramp and we can finish the level as normal. Now we're using the red ramp this time around because that will actually change your momentum to be less downward oriented and more horizontally oriented so we won't bounce as high which means we'll need to end up gaining more speed so we'll need to use better strafing to gain more speed and reach the end there um so this this route definitely means you have a much better grasp of your air strafing than especially the uh, sub two route for tutorial because you really need to have the good angles and the uh, good mouse movements to get there and another uh, backup strategy too. Now I'll talk backup strategies after. Uh, second route here, it's gonna be a bit the same. I'm actually not used to this route because I never really used it. Okay, I'm actually going too fast. So you don't actually need as good a strafing for this one, technically. So yeah, you can, it's kind of funny actually. I actually don't know how to do this route. I personally find it not as useful. Um, I guess you can do this. What? That'll get you sub 10. You can do what? Like, you probably do no crouch jump here. Crouch jump here, maybe? I'll be honest, I don't like this route. Uh, I've seen people use it to get, like, low nines. Um, basically what you're doing is a wall edge jump off of here. Um, so you probably would want to aim to wall ride later on the wall, uh, just so that you're not gonna be sent as high because you know, the wall edge jump will send you a little bit higher than a regular wall jump. So you wanna be a little bit lower on the wall so you don't spend as much time floating through the air and you can get off that jump earlier. So as you were seeing, I was having difficulty landing on the red ramp because I had too much speed and I was jumping too far uh, along that path down there. I was jumping like over here because I had too much speed and height. Whereas like if you can aim to, I don't know, crouch jump somewhere along here-ish, I guess. Um, you should be able to then gain speed through strafing and hit the red ramp and finish as usual. You won't have as much speed though, um, doing the regular route I showed before with just regular wall jumps and crouch jumps and whatnot. Let's see if I can do it. I guess you don't need to crouch jump here. You can wait on your, uh, oh man. I just don't really like this route because it's hard to keep that speed. Um, it feels like you have to slow down 
because of the wall edge jump that gives you a little extra speed and height. Uh, that's why I prefer this first route, but you can find what's comfortable to you. You can even, you can even like, if you have trouble getting enough speed, I think you can potentially crouch jump there. I think you can like uncrouch and get the speed still that or something but personally i just like using this route just to focus purely on my strafing you could potentially do like a crowd wall jump off of there too but this one purely about the strafing you can even go under table and get an eight four that's why i like it um and you can play it safe and still get like a nine ish second one you know if you don't want to commit to the uh timing of the under the table milk or whatever that is you can just make it on the platform um, if you make it short though, actually, if you don't quite make it to the uh, platform, let's just say I don't. Excellent. Let's just say I don't make it as far as I want to. Like I strafe a little off. I'm about to make it. What I can do there is I actually uncrouch, do a regular B hop while uncrouched. That'll give me enough jump height to clear the table. And after I jump, I, I crouch so that I don't bump the table with my legs or whatever, you know, the lower part of the hitbox. Uh, then I can actually reach the milk in that way. It's a little harder timing, but it is a backup strategy if you don't get enough speed and you still want to go hit the milk directly. And maybe don't like you don't like timing the uh, passing under the table to the milk. So that's just another method of ending the route. Um, yeah, so this one, just crouch jumps, strafing. Um, wall edge jump root. You might have to figure that out a little bit more on your own. Some people, there are a lot of examples. Like I know Sloth uses that one. Um, some other runners use it as well. Uh, you guys can probably look at some of the current 140 times if you're not one of them already. Because I'm pretty sure most of the 140 times use this already. Um, at least the wall edge jump root. Uh, but yeah. We're gonna move on to Sandbox Zero now, which is literally just the same exact thing. Just use better strafing. You can get a little closer to the barrel. You can aim around five seconds or so. Um, this one, you just, you know, same deal. You just want to focus on clearing the level. There's not much to say here. Yeah. One thing I will say though. I've been finding recently that it is much more consistent to jump earlier into here. So you don't need to get as close to the barrel before jumping. You just jump a little earlier. You can even uncrouch here so that your you know hitbox extends lower. Um, so that's kind of what I like to do. Uh, you can get a sub five or somewhere at time around five seconds or so. Um, just mostly focus on getting this consistently, you know, around the five second margin. Um, all right, sandbox one. We're gonna be doing updated from the sub two guide, where we kind of did a regular jump and then we did a propelled jump after this. This is in the sub two guide where we can do that. Um, we're gonna do something different. So it's just a regular shot first um, with a B hop potentially. Yeah, like this. Maybe not. There we go. And then you can hold back as you go if you're going, wow, it's actually a really good time. What you're most likely getting is about four seconds on here. You can even just do a regular slide. The issue is if you get too much speed, you can overshoot it. So now I'm trying to remember the angle that you shoot at. So, oh, there you go. Okay, so that's about the angle you want to aim at to get not as much speed, but still clear the gap. You just need to time your shot when you're closer to the edge there. Maybe you can uncrouch and hold back to slow yourself down. You can get about four seconds-ish, or apparently if you do it really well, you can get sub four, like good sub four. Um, so there's that route. You can do the just sliding, or you can do a b-hop. But still, just make sure you time that, um, time this shot right at the edge. There you go. You can sub four with the b-hop route. Um, so, yeah, um, that basically explains that. Just remember the, the angle is the most important, it's actually the starting, starting thing. So you kind of want to, what I like to do, I just hold W, I just hold forward, and kind of just turn. Hold W and turn, and I get close enough to pick it up. 
And as I pick it up, I'm just shooting, like, and crouching and shooting basically straight down. For the most part. But, like, not exactly straight down. It's kind of a... Uh, kind of, not straight down, but just, like, I don't know how to explain it. Kind of, like, a little bit angled forward. Yeah. That's what you just gotta get used to. Um, you've got some good times with it. You can even get four seconds with that. Um, so yeah, just play around with that one. It's a lot about feeling uh, where you gotta shoot those boomers out. And use whichever uh, variation is more comfortable for you. Alright, Sandbox 2 is the same as usual. Um, just make sure you optimize your shotgun grab. Uh, you can do this through simple b-hop and strafe, or just a better first strafe and slide. So let's see, so you can slide like this. Something like that. Main thing I try to aim for is to like not overshoot to the left. If I can overshoot like here, I don't know, I've just found it's easier to line up for myself. You can even do two shotguns, three. You want to get around 11 seconds or less. That's usually the best case scenario. <laughs> yeah. Just get used to the timing. You can get 11 seconds. Just keep your shotgun timings like, you know, held down. There. Yeah. 10. You're gonna get 10 too, just by timing it right and holding the shotgun the whole time. Um, especially this first section. I want to make sure I explain this too. I see a lot of people overcomplicating this first section. Um, to be honest, I like just grabbing. After I grab, it's just a crouch and jump. And I don't even like to turn my crosshair much at all. I just purely go off of the, um, use my movement keys. It just helps me not add any more variables into the uh, equation. And I just kind of messed it up, I got too much speed. But it helps, it helps me at least, because all I know is just, okay, I do this, I just need to position around here, and that'll clear me here, and then I just have a bit of a timing in my head, just, you can see the side of these things, so then you can kind of judge, like, okay, now I start holding right, and then as I'm getting to the wall, I like to turn around and finish, when not going blind, for some reason a lot of people like to finish blind, it boggles me still, that so many runners still like to do this, when you can literally just smoothly do this and you just get like a ton of speed um, and you have control better control with strafing you literally just get loose like diagonally down to the right so you get speed and height you can keep it safe you're not even going for full, full horizontal boosts it's you can make it a lot easier on yourself if you just do that just practice that you're gonna say <laughs> come on people so yeah you're aiming for about for a sub 130, you want to get about like a sub 11. For a sub 140, you can get probably between like sub 12 is good enough. Um, even just like, it just depends. I don't know how the exact times are working out with this. Um, these are just more advanced routes that'll get you to these times. So that's all I'm trying to do with this tutorial. All right, escape zero. Let's just uh, gunless, honestly. You can do gunless with crouch jumps. Even if you mess up, just if you get a 5.5 or just sub 6, you're fine on this level. Whichever route you like to use. Some people like picking up the gun here and just breaking stuff. Wall jumps are helpful. Yeah, if you get a 5.5 or less or just sub 6, you're good to go. Um, yeah, just make sure you're using either crouch jumps down the hall or use strafing with. Um, Personally, I think the crouching route is better for practice as well as um, just consistency because it's kind of awkward to time the strafing and the crouch jumps, at least for me, just going straight down the hall. I mean, you can do it. If you like it that way, you can go for it. Um, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, that's all I got to say here. There's not much to explain. If 
it's just a matter of practice and if you've got strafing down for tutorial the new tutorial routes you'll be able to get the strafing to get speed on this one as well just aim for your uh, sub six or whatnot and you should be fine um yeah now escape one we got a couple routes i'd like to show you um there's a some routes that i've seen people go for recently actually here is a modified wall clip route okay so here's a modified wall clip route that I've seen some people, some runners go for. So, okay. Here's a modified wall clip route I've seen people go for. Where they go gunless and then just take it slow on this area. I'm not doing it very well. But you can get about 10 seconds with this, which is solid. Um, I'm going to show you a route that if you don't like the wall clips and you want to practice doing the uh, boomer pickup, which will be helpful to practice for future optimizations. Um, I'm just going to show you a no wall clip boomer route, that's simple. There. You can get sub 10 with this, you can get like a 9 second with this if you do it perfectly or really well. Um, yeah, so this one is consistently about 10 seconds or sub 10, which is why I like it. Uh, it's mechanically pretty simple to... Uh, consistently get good times with um, as well as it's good to practice for the future so I just like to start here crash jump wall ride get the boomer just do strafe jump and slide wait a little bit so you get more speed there crash jump 9.4 um, yeah this guy you don't need to work at the wall. I like to try to aim to shoot my boomer gun off of this doorpost but if that doesn't work, this also works. Don't need to worry about this guy because you know you'll fly by him. Um, so yeah, you're aiming for this doorpost, um, or if you break through and you shoot off here, it's fine as well. You're just aiming to go left wall, middle wall, and then once you're around this area here, you know, just you can go for a boomer shot, just straight down, or you can go kind of along the side-ish of you. Um, Whichever works, whatever you want to do. Um, main thing is, the lower you are to the ground, uh, the faster the boomer shot's going to send you across the hall, which is sometimes a good thing to wait for, because like if you're way up, like you took the wall jump pretty high, and you try to do a boomer, like you won't get much speed, and you can still recover, but it's mo most optimal to... Uh, hello? Give me, thank you. Most optimal to uh, try and get... It. When you're really low to the ground. And you see there, I uh, actually shot a little too far behind me, um, and I wasn't angled perfectly through there. That's kind of why I like to shoot a little bit to the right, just slightly, so I don't end up hitting there. Because it's better to hit this wall and then bounce off and go to the back wall than it is to bump this wall and just have all your momentum killed. It's like I feel like if you're gonna use a fast wall clip route, you should just go for boomer. Um, because I, I can guarantee that this strafe, that the strafe to get this, uh, wall clip is much easier than the one to <laughs> use the, uh, gunless route. It's, it's easier to line up, in my opinion. And then you just have to get used to this. Um, so that's up to you. You can mix and match as you like, um, but I do recommend the no wall clip boomer route, personally. All right, now we're on escape two. This is exactly the same, except I'm just gonna make a a point here. You watch my sub two guide. I did tell you guys to uh, make sure you go to the right, hold forwards right, hold forwards right. Do that we're getting about 120 speed here, which is fine. Um, you really want to make sure you're getting about 120 speed between 110 to 120. That's gonna give you a time between like 16 to like 14 to 16 seconds, depending on how well you execute. A couple points too. Turning your crosshair with the grapple rotation. So as you're rotating around this section here, you want to match that speed with your crosshair. For the most part. That gives you the best chance of keeping speed. Also, Hitting that grapple as soon as you can around the corner. One thing for the ending here that I realized 
is a good strategy. If you're landing in front of the table, uh, just do a regular b-hop, standing b-hop, uh, so uncrouched. Do that into the table. You should bump the table and push yourself forward into the milk. Um, if you try to do a uncrouched under the table to get to the milk, the, the milk on this level is actually slightly too high for you to reach it from just standing. So if you uncrouch under the table, you won't actually hit the milk, which is really weird. You can blame Danny for that one. Basically, yeah, key points. This level is all about the beginning in terms of how fast it's going to end up being. It's all about getting speed in this first section here. Left strafe, right strafe to the middle. And then this section here, that grapple around that corner, you wanted to get it as early as possible. And what helps with this is looking just straight ahead. And that's also why you want to be rotating your view with the as you rotate around this corner. So that once you get to here, you can basically look straight forward. And it'll give you the maximum possible grapple distance. Um, because as you know, the grapple itself functions um, where it doesn't give you the grapple exactly where you're looking, but to the nearest possible point within its range. So if you're looking along a wall like that, the uh, nearest possible point from your crosshair to that wall is going to be the furthest that your grapple can go. And that's going to give you the most speed. So again, right, get out towards the middle as far as you can. Um, yeah, I hit my grapple a little too early there. Just go right out here and then look straight down the hall. And you'll get a bunch of speed. And then you might have just practice, you know, getting back up roots and whatnot. And if you get even a time of 15, sub 16 ish, like that's great. That's fantastic. Um, this really, this beginning section is the most important part that you'll need to practice. It's where you get all the speed. So just make sure you're getting in that like 110 to 120 range. So now let's go to escape three. We'll go for, there's a couple different routes. You can optimize your shotgun route, which is this. Okay. And I still got it. So it's fine. Let's optimize this with straightening and good boosts. Right, you can get sub seven with this route, um, but if you get around the 7.5 margin, that's fine. You can also go for gunless with crop jumps. Um, there's no mega jump. Even if you break door, you can get sub seven, and that's a really good time. Uh, you can also do prop jump to the wall, a uh, wall jump. You can do this. Um, that's another alternative. You can get sub seven there. These are two good routes. So I suppose the important thing to explain here would be the wall, uh, the prop jumping. So you're aiming to, I'm gonna kill this guy. Oof. All right, so you're aiming. I'm gonna start here. You just wanna jump out and wall ride for a little bit. Um, you will hit this prop. You will hit the cabinet if you wait too long. And the timing for this, you wanna make sure that you jump and then click. Jump and then grab. Because if you grab beforehand, you run the risk of like the prop kind of freaking out and then just kind of kills the run at least sometimes that happens i like to time it where i just jump click you know in quick succession just make sure i jump first you don't need to crouch while doing this um, in fact when you're doing the prop jumping you don't want to be crouching you want to be uncrouched and jumping just holding jump and you can get about two jumps off the prop to go straight to the window or just do one jump or two jumps even if you want to go to the wall there um if you just hold it basically just in front of you you just just about there. you just get this is another thing just to get used to the feeling of you can just not even do a crouch jump here yeah, it's just another thing to practice you're safe from these guys as long as you just keep moving so you don't even need to worry um just get used to that route So, and you can add a crouch jump here if you want like that. In the door, six point five is a great time. So yeah, that's just to get used. Just get used to that. Yeah, prop jumping isn't too crazy. It's just about the angle you're looking at, and yeah, you'll get used to it. Let's go on Sky Zero. 
Sa same deal. Just, just get a decent boost. Another couple decent boosts. You can crouch here. Okay. You want to aim for about four seconds. Maybe sub four. You can get something else. I don't know. It should be fine as long as you're completing in like a 4x time frame. Just, um, just be as efficient as you can. No need to try and rush it. This is near the end of the run. You can try to do that if you want. That can be a little dangerous sometimes. Um, what I like to do still at this point is just get a more upward boost, turn around for a shotgun boost, and then adjust afterwards. If you find yourself going a little too fast, like you got too low a boost, you might need to adjust, do something like that. Um, this one you just to play around with. Yeah. This type of time should be fine. Um, I still recommend if you get about 50-ish uh, on your boost, as you noticed if you look up to the top left, 50-ish uh, speed and you're going up, even less, uh, you want to get more. You want to get about 50. Yeah, so like 50 to 60, you can still get like a shotgun boost and direct your speed there. If you're already going with 60, you could potentially just ride it the whole way, 60 or more. Um, but if you got less speed than that, definitely prepare for like a shotgun boost of sorts and maybe an adjustment shot afterwards. This is also why it's helpful to have a speed indicator because for certain routes like this one, knowing exactly how fast you're moving can determine whether or not you want to use a shotgun boost or immediately or just go for an adjustment boost later. So pro tip, turn on your speed indicator, hit tab, speed one, bingo. All right, we're on to Sky 1. Sky 1, we can practice the faster setup. I'm just so used to this, like, faster left side route. This is not what you should be going for um, in terms of that route, because you need a lot of speed. But this same setup, you can definitely practice and go for. Um, you can even go, like, right side with a wall jump. Maybe an edge wall jump. Okay, yeah, don't, don't, don't script like that. That would be very unfortunate. You can even play it safe here. Um, you can also do a jump so that you get in position a little bit faster. Yeah, make sure you do a crouch jump here. You know? Crouch jump. Um, if you hit left side, you can do this thing for an extra boost. And just go over here. Uh, if you're getting like a 10 to 11 second time, it's great for sub 130 pace. Uh, for sub 140 pace, you can still get like a maybe 11, 12, even 13, depending on how fast you're going overall. Um, oh, yeah, definitely you can get a 13 time and get sub 140. Um, but yeah, this is the route you should be practicing, to be honest. But if you kind of mess up, I mean, yeah, like this is, uh, you can't really recover for something like that. You can practice the uh, crouch jump movement to get faster or just something like that. Uh, if you find yourself, this is not enough speed, but then you can always recover into the grapple route. Um, definitely recover better than that. That's not the best. So, so, like, this is not going to be... Oh, this could be enough speed. Potentially, no. Uh, with good strafing, not quite. Yeah. So the main thing you want to do when practicing this route is... Um, just bear in mind just like how it feels in terms of like... Well, I have enough speed to get gunless. Because the big thing with gunless is that you need enough speed to, you know, cross the gaps. Like here, I'd have to slow down to hit those uh, red pills. Oh. To hit the uh, red walls over there, I'd I would have had to slow down. But if we got a boost like this, like this is fantastic. Like I can even just go straight to the red wall from there. That could have been sub 10. Um, let's say I go like this. I cannot get gunless with this. It's just too slow. I got too much height and not enough forward speed. Let's say I get this. I could get gunless here, I believe. You can make a lot of adjustments on this level. Like, I didn't even plan for that. I just kind of went with it. Um, the better control of your movement you got, the better. Um, the more available options that you see as backups, the better. Um, gunless will be faster pretty much no matter what than grapple. So let's say, for example, you don't want to go for it. You go grapple. Oh, I, I don't... I'm bad at grapple. It's been so long. 
So let's say you don't get the best. So like you don't want to go for gun list here. Let's say you go for I don't know. You could you could grapple off here and just like do something kooky like that and get a good time. Like there's a lot of things you can do in Sky One. I just kind of want to show you like how much you can do if you get enough skin straight. Like you can just you can do all sorts of crap. Not that though. That's not very good. So this is this could be fast enough for gunless? No. It's hard to line that up too. This is just a lot of experimentation. Um, this will be a lot of experimentation and practice for you too in terms of just figuring out what you're comfortable with and getting a boost. Like I could go right side with this. You just want to get the feeling for what kind of boost will give you, um, kind of determines what route you're going to take. Because sometimes you'll be planning to get a certain type of boost and then you'll mess it up and you'll have to know the backup strategy. So like I could, I think I can go gunless here. Ooh, I, I messed up. If I had hit the uh, orange block there and jumped off of that, I could have saved it, I think. Um, so just, just play around with it. This is obviously the uh, the best route. This is the fastest. A low boost is going left side. Um, yeah. But you can make right side work. You can make uh, left side work with just make it slower. And then you can also make grapple work. So I wouldn't go gun this here, but you can't read grapple, so it's kind of dead. So this will be a grapple route because I'm way too slow. I've seen people do this actually. Grapple down there. That is faster. I will recommend that. Um, going low and grappling off that red wall. And then doing a wall jump off the final red wall. Um, so that is the better grapple route that you should go for. You can get like 13 seconds, I know, pretty consistently if you do it well. And especially grabbing the grapple gun on the go and not stopping. Uh, that would be optimal for sure. And that's what you should be going for if you're using the grapple. Otherwise, it's just a lot slower and not really worth going for. All right, we're on Sky 2, and here we go. The... Yes. This is where, if you're going for sub-140, you pretty much have to at this point, unless you're implementing a lot of faster routes and other levels, you're, you're going for the wall edge jump route, okay? I'll explain you all the, the details of how to get consistently at at this, because this this first section is the hard part. Just here to here to there. Once you can kind of get this down consistently, the rest of it's a breeze because it's just the same as it used to as the regular route afterwards. So starting out, you'll start up lined up in the middle. What I like to do is forwards left, kind of to the left middle-ish. So I go forwards left. Kind of run forward for a bit and as i'm approaching this area i like to kind of hold right and just do a jump so kind of like this and you're aiming for the corner here and the thing i want you to notice is how i uh, am aiming my crosshair as i'm jumping i'm just doing one fluid motion as i'm hitting the corner i'm turning so i'm immediately strafing after i jump off which gives me the speed to get to this platform and wall right off the side. Because the issue is, if you don't turn, uh, if you don't turn to strafe quick enough, I'll just try and show you what happens. I'm kind of strafing as I go into this too. It's just whatever's comfortable for you. You can, you don't get enough speed if you don't turn right away. Goodness, I can't even do it incorrectly. I, I literally I can't do it incorrectly for some reason. <laughs> Basically, I see people having issues getting to the platform because they're not turning their strafe enough. Like, look, you can get so much speed just from turning your strafe properly. But you don't want to overturn it. That is true, because you could potentially go too far to the right and not hit this part of the platform. Um, so, from there, this is just practice. From here, you want to make sure now, as you're wall riding here, you want to face this tunnel. Um, this is because in the next section, we're going to wall ride for a little bit on this platform.
to get a little bit of extra height. And as we're approaching the edge here, we don't want to jump off the edge exactly, but just about the edge. We're going to be holding forwards right and doing a wall jump. Because the wall jump will set us to the left, and we don't want to go to the left. That's why we're holding right to counteract that momentum. But we want to keep moving forward because we're aiming to bump into one of these corners. Um, it'll be one specific corner. Uh, we'll, we'll bump into that corner without crouching. So then we'll wall ride on it, like so. And then, as you can see, we can wall ride along the side of the rotating tunnel while crouched. Um, so I'll just try and demonstrate this here. Just like that. You can hold jump, actually. We can finish the level, just as usual there. All right. And going fairly slow, not using a lot of strafing and taking our time. We got an 11.30. Um, going a little bit faster. A little extra strafing. You can even go this route. Go under table, 10 seconds. You can go over the table. Uh, probably get a 10.5. Uh, that's kind of what you're aiming for. Um, but just just watch my example route here. Just, just watch this. Watch how I do it. You can kill a shotgun guy and go for a shotgun if you want to be spicy. That'll be for sub-130 for sure. But for sub-140, you can just use this regular route. Um, okay, if you jump too late, you won't get the uh, boost you need. You just gotta make sure you hit the corner, and that'll pop you up. You can play it safe and just avoid him entirely, jump on the table from this side. You can play it a lot of ways, um, but definitely at this point, if you're taking it very, very slow at the end of Sky 2, um, you should be practicing your finishing on this level. Um, if you want a faster finish that's safer, left side, uh, going through the cabinets, super recommend it. I, I really recommend that. Um, yeah, if you miss the corner, you'll just fly through here. That's why you want to make sure you uh, don't jump off too late. You can use some strafing. Strafe. Go up here. 1018 going through the cabinets. So that's pretty good. Um, and it's completely safe. This guy won't track you in time as long as you jump through. And don't like hang around in front of the table like stuck on the back for too long. Um, so this is completely safe to go for if you prefer that. Uh, one other variation for a faster time is to use the shotgun. Okay, didn't quite get it that time. There we go. Shoot the guy, grab shotgun. A uh, couple boosts. If you mess it up, yeah, it can be bad if you mess it up. You just gotta get used to the uh, timings for these boosts. And you can use strafing to gain speed. You can get sub nine with this. And you can, if you take it slower even, or make a mistake or something, you can get sub 10. Um, and those are great times as well. There is another variation of this route that Oimeo uses. He's gonna say clout in the comments now. But it's actually pretty, it's very fast. Uh, but it involves actually resetting after the timer is gone for a tiny amount of time. So like, if you have your um, pause button bound to something, like I have mine on mouse too, so that works well. Um, even if like you don't, once you hit, you can just practice from sky one. You just hit next, pause about like a tenth of a second, and then you do the route as normal. Just fly through here. This table should be a line for you to jump through. But the other thing is you need enough speed. So you will need to use better strafing um, to get more speed, so it's a little less forgiving for, uh, people new to the route, just because you need to get a good amount of speed. Just gotta practice using the shotgun to, uh, yeah, see, the table isn't exactly lined up because we didn't do a reset. Just make sure you crouch through here. Just use strafing. We messed up at the end, we still got an 850, which is was faster than, you know, the other route. Just, yeah, gotta make sure you're using strafing to gain horizontal speed and using the shotgun for vertical height. Um, and that again, you just gotta get the feel for it. But I've explained all the technical details 
beginning of this route. Um, just making sure you hit the edge jump. You don't need to crouch at all. Uh, you don't need to do the crouch jump thing into here. That's a movement optimization that you don't need to do. You can just do regular walk, no crouching. Just jump into it. Make sure you get that strafe. Make sure you hold right. Bump, crouch, hold right, hold jumps. Go there. Strafe, jump through. 10 seconds. Beautiful. Yeah, that's about it. Um, these times, combine them as you are comfortable or as you're putting, you know, you want to push yourself. That's what you, know, you really want to do is push yourself. Get some ILPBs with these times. Um, if you're, you know, kind of at the sub two margin, you can practice these routes to get some PBs, uh, and then you can start implementing them in runs. But for those of you who are looking to get sub 140 and potentially to sub 130, these routes will get you there. Uh, just implement them as you will. Some of them was just you gotta optimize them in terms of your movement. You might get slower times than me because you just don't have as good of strafing or whatnot. Um, that will come with time and as you practice more. So these routes will get you to sub 140 for sure and with better movement and good strafing and all that jazz, get you to sub 130 as well, I believe. Um, just, yeah, I'll leave it at that. This is kind of just my thoughts. There's not much more to say other than good luck. Practice is key. And if you wanna hang out in the Discord, we can answer questions and all that jazz. This is more for topper, more top runners, like top 30-ish, because, well, you know, those of you who are still finding your way to the sub two area, um, I'm sure you guys will make it there soon. You'll get to this level and we'll be waiting for you. Um, yeah, so good luck and get a sub 140 already, Pexo. I, you, you didn't need this guide, but here you go anyways, uh, yeah.